Call the roll, Madam Clerk. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Yes, or no? Yes, yes. Chris Franklin. Wanda Crockett. Yes. Monica Davis. Ever Jean Ford? Yes. Yes. Don Ethely? I guess, yes. Monica Davis? Yes. Chris Franklin? Five, yes. One. Well, with that damage being done, I guess. Um, we're here to discuss the um, budget for 2021. And correct me if I'm wrong, we don't have a printed agenda, do we? No, no, no. No, sir. No, sir. It's just okay. the budget is the only thing you have. Okay. So we can just dive in. Um, I guess we can. Uh, and what I guess what I would like to do is just start, let's go down department by department if everybody's ready. And um, we can address issues that anyone may have in each department. And that may be the best way, unless somebody objects then. Um, I have my copy of the 2021 proposed budget and we can start with page, well, let me see. What might be the best way? Does anybody have a, a preference for departments? I hear none. Let's just start with administration. Is there anything that anybody would like to discuss as it relates to administration and the budget? What about that'll the, be page? Uh, I'm sorry, that'll be page four on your your, your printed version. Page four. Page four. Well, that's I don't have the budget in front. Of me. Yeah. At least the expenditures start on page four. I have a, I'll start us off with a question. Maybe that's to help to get us rolling. Uh, Mr. Treasurer, on um, page four, you have contract labor at $12,012, which is a specific amount. How do we arrive at that number? That's uh, the lady that uh, uh, custodian, <clears throat> the custodian that we use over here in the city hall. Okay. so. We don't have any other, at least at this point, anticipated or proposed contract labor. Uh, not an admin. Let me make sure that that's what that is, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what it is. I'm trying to find the amount per month, but, oh, let me go to the salvage worksheet. But that's that, that's the young lady that, that the, the custodian in uh, over here in City Hall. Is that her okay. salary? Uh, that's what I'm trying to find. Um, it is 11, you know, uh, minimum wage, $11 an hour, 21 hours a week. Did you guys hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't sure if I was on mute. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got a question. Proposed salaries. The, who, who, who's a janitor for uh, $20,800? Uh, on which one? Can you point us to a page? 
Now, if it's 20,800, 20, 20, that's probably over in the police department. Mr. Turner, can you, for, can you forward me a copy of the, of the proposed budget? I don't have a copy yeah. in my email I'm looking for. Yeah. You hear me, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss Ford? Yeah, what do you want? Bro? Repeat, please. That's in the police department. That's Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Turner. Uh, yes. Could you forward me a copy of the budget, please? Yes. That's what I'm doing. Thank you, sir. Okay. Miss Ford, what page were you looking at? Eight. Don, I wasn't in the budget. I'm sorry. I, I know you're on page four. I was looking in the projected salaries and I saw that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And if anybody has any questions along the way, just um, just kind of jump in and, and, and let us know. I'm just moving down the administration portion uh, as it relates to expenses. Somebody. Well, I got one question. Go ahead, go ahead. And it's about what Ms. Moore just talked about. If, uh, is that the is that under the budget for the police department, Ms. Ford? Both yeah, One, I'm sorry. I, I just I kind of jumped out there without uh looking at my budget. I what I pulled up first was the proposed worksheet. And I looked at that. I I'll look in the budget uh for it. If it's a, if it's uh twenty twenty four if it's if she's asked was that a janitor and it was twenty thousand twenty Twenty thousand eight eight hundred dollars. That's that's in the police department. The only one we have is one in city hall, and the other other janitor we have is in the police department. I guess my question is, if uh, if that's in the police department, is that in their budget or is it in administration budget? It's the police department's budget. But let me double let me double check for you. Let me look. Yeah, that's in the police department, twenty two thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars for a custodian. It's going to be on, it should be in your salaries and wages. I think uh, it's on page 10. No, uh, uh. It's page eight, Miss Ford. Page eight, okay. <laughs> um, I see contract, salaries, contract, and labors. Well, I thought it would say janitor, but. The, the amount you're talking about is $22,880. Or if you look on your salaries and wages and benefits, Worksheet that's going to be the police department. It's going to say custodian. Oh, well, I see you got cut. I the see contract the label. That's in admin. That's the custodians in the uh, city hall. No, in the police department. Uh, I'm looking that's at that too. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just saying, okay. Yeah, that's uh, no, I'm just saying what I saw. Even then, yeah, oh. I'm looking at you uh, with the okay. police department. Yeah, I got. Building, building expense repair for two thousand dollars, and I see every every time we get a new chief or some, they go over that. They they have new paint, new everything. I think that should, if you got some building expense, yeah, I find you know, I guess you take that out. Even I see you got equipment expenses, and you got auto repair. So what? So in your auto in your um, equipment uh, repair, your building repair, your auto repair. Then you got um, maintenance expenses. Then you got another auto expenses. So how many auto expenses they gonna have with maintenance and supplies? Because you got that's uh, two, four, that's seventeen. Um, you know, that's a lot of money. Are we still on page four? I'm sorry, Miss Davis. Page. I'm asking. No, ma'am. I'm down to page eight. When, when it was... Okay. You can. Let's. Um... Hold 
What department are you? You, you moved over. Is that the? Um... He was talking about police. Police. I, I mean, okay. is, that, is that is that where everybody? I mean, what? I mean, I just. Oh, oh, we started. We started on administration. We were on page oh, okay. five. I'm sorry. I'll go back. I, I'm. I apologize. I apologize. I jumped out there with a question that didn't have anything to do with admin. So that's how we that's how we got there. Okay. That, that's that's fine. Anytime. Okay, they got this. Uh, I don't want anybody to lose their train of thought. So did everybody's questions get answered or are there any additional questions? The, uh, the first my question, question was, my question got answered okay mr franklin did your question get answered uh i'm gonna hold off to it mr Elliott, until we get to that page i, I was just jumping i apologize for that no, no problem no problem okay so i have a question uh on page five we have thirty thousand dollars allocated for election expenses and what election would that be relative to in, in the year 2021? Uh, or is that a past due expense? It was in last year's budget and we didn't pay anything. So I kind of left it in there, but I think we paid, uh, I can check and see how much we, we paid a couple of thousand dollars. So it wasn't as much as I uh, had budgeted for. And so we can change that amount. I miss uh, Ramsey can, tell us if she anticipates any, any more, but I think we paid $2,000 a week ago. But let me let me double check for you. Okay. There, should, there shouldn't be anything in 2021 as far as an election, unless someone calls for a special election and then it would be around 2000 again. Our biggest expense is gonna be uh, when we do the governor and everybody in a couple of years. Okay. So would it be, uh, and, and I'm just, you know, feel free to give me your feedback. Would it be safe for us to reduce that to 2,000 from 30? Yes. Yeah, I think if we don't um, have, let me look, I can tell you exactly how much it was. And then I would say. It was $2,331 and one cent. So if she doesn't, if we don't, if she doesn't anticipate anything else, we can, we can take that down to that if we want to. Well, can we modify it to 2,500 to make the, and make sure everything will be covered? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, that's fine for me. Does anybody have any objection to 2,500? No objections? Yeah, Mr. Turner, would you um, just at least amend that line to 2,500 in our next uh, printed version of whatever the budget is gonna be? Okay. Mm -hmm. Trying to do these things as we go, so I just change. Um, as a miscellaneous expense, we have sixty-six thousand dollars to the Port Authority. Um, could you give us a little uh, insight on what that is? That is, um, we. Owed the Port Authority two hundred some odd thousand dollars, and I think that is a. I'm not sure. That's a quarter. That's an annual payment. So I think we're gonna have to pay them over. This this Ram, do you remember how many years we're paying that over? But I, I did have notes in here, but I, I let me try to find that. That's to the Port Authority. You know, we don't pay them anymore because we don't get that uh, because of the new tax, the the, the, the new jail tax. So we don't have to remit money to the Port Authority anymore, but did we, we did have a pass-through balance. About uh, five. Ma'am? It's about five years. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's $6,000 $6, a year. Yeah, so that's the how much we're going to pay them over the next five years. Okay. So... Do we know the, I guess we're doing approximations how, how, about how much do we owe them? I can, I can, do you know, Ms. Hale, I can find the letter. I mean, it's not right. Hold on a minute. Let me, I think I have it in my, I have a folder that I use to do my budget. Mm -hmm. 
So let me see if I can actually find the actual letter. Okay, um, the debt Looks like it's $262,235. Will you say that again, Mr. Turner? $262,235. Well, it says the total debt is $484,399. 484? 484, 399. What was the annual um, amount of our indebtedness? Uh, it just depended on the, um, we were paying 15% of the receipt. Right. Yeah, so I think it was 14 point something percent. So it came out to be like 142,000 dollars a year somewhere in that neighborhood, 150, 140, $150,000 a year. And so this, most of this debt stemmed from 2009, I think, like the beginning of 2009. And uh, 2019 and 11, somewhere up in there, I can't remember the exact date. And so- It's gotta be, it's gotta be 11. 11, that's Because I think that's, I think that harbor tax went up for renewal in 2010, so it's got to be 11. 11. Okay, so yeah, that's where most of that happened in 2011. We don't have a um, any written agreement about an amount that we'll pay them, do? Yeah, that's what I was just looking at. Uh, it was a, a uh, offer made by the mayor to uh, John Edwards. Um, this was, I think they did it before June 30, June 30, 2020, but I see the letter that I'm looking at is dated June 30, 2020. And it says that the, the total debt was $484,399.01. So we're paying sixteen five hundred a quarter until it's paid off. Okay. Do we have appropriate records in terms of what we actually paid them? I mean, can we ascertain that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I didn't want it to turn into like the the uh, alleged jail debt, but okay. No, no, we 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 actually we knew what what the what's on the balance sheet was two hundred and ten thousand dollars. I think that's that's on the balance sheet. <laughs> And so we went back to our books and records and uh, we, we, we figured it out with uh, the records that we had with the uh, state auditors and with their auditor. And so we, we came to the conclusion that that's how much we owe. And so that's 16,500 a quarter. And so that's, that's where you get the $66,000 Annual until it's paid off. Okay. Any anybody have any questions about that? 
If there be none, I have a question about the legal services, which is professional services, which is in the next paragraph. We have 88,000 to the Arkansas Municipal League. Uh, what would that represent? Is that the, uh, uh, I guess, the um, retainer fee for lawsuits, or does it represent something else? Yeah, that's what it is. You can pay, pay them. It's, it's, it's gone up over the last few years, but that's what we pay them. They still can do it. And, uh, I don't. I'm not sure if uh, Ms. Rams has paid that already or, or not, but that's that's the annual fee for the legal aid. Okay. Yes, sir. It's paid. Okay. Paid for 2021. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody have any additional questions about professional services? If not, I will move on. Uh, if anybody has any questions about anything in here, feel free to interrupt me and let me know. So clarification, if we've already paid that to the Arkansas Municipal League, are we going to leave that there or we're going to take it out or we're going to leave another amount? Yeah, Can we you clarify? Should, we need it in there because if she paid it, I'm not sure if she paid it in December for 2021. And so we would need this amount in there in the budget if we pay 2022's amount in 2021. So we, we, we have to have a line item for it before we pay it. I understand, thank you. So I was, yeah, I would suggest leaving it in. Okay. I just flipped over to page six and y'all okay. stop me from going too fast. I just flipped over to page six. Um, I'm looking at animal control, which has nothing in it. We have supplies, no salaries, no payroll taxes, nothing of that nature. Um, what are the supplies for animal control? We don't know yet. You know, that's what we were anticipating, trying to do something, uh, get the department a little bit, to just to get a start. So we didn't know exactly what uh, we needed. So those were just some estimates. I think most of that is held over from last year's budget, I believe. Okay. I think it was, right. well, maybe it may have been, I think it was only $10,000 last year, but I think he added 15000 for other professional services, and that would be like spay and neutering and things like that. So that's general, generally what all of those things is. It's kind of hard to estimate what we need, so you guys had told us and limited us to 10,000 last year. And I think he, I can't remember why, but he's not on the meeting now, but I know he wants to increase for some reason. But I think most of the increase went into other professional services. And like I said, that would be for spaying the neutering. Okay. <clears throat> any questions? If not, I'm going to, if, does anybody have any questions about anything on page six? Because if not, I'm going to move on to page seven. Any questions? Yeah, okay, if there be none, on page seven, uh, code enforcement. So code enforcement, we have the uh, insurance benefits salaries. I see contract labor has nothing on it. Um, supplies, I'm looking for ugh, demolition. Okay. So I took it out and I told, I think I sent you a, I sent you guys an email, I believe. And I said that I took it out because we didn't use it because sanitation and um, street department, you know, we were using our own labor to do it. Right. And so I, so I suggested, well, I took it out, but I didn't use it. So it's kind of like you want to put it back in there. That's, that's fine. But. I didn't know exactly how you want to do it. So if you want to use it for something else, if you want to continue to use the city's labor to do the demolition, or if you wanted to, because I'm supposing that the $50,000 was to, to contract with someone else to do it. Uh, well, uh, just a question. In, in the past, when we've contracted out demolition, what are we spending, uh, let's say, per structure? If there, if you can arrive at an average, what would it be per structure? I don't, that miss. Ms. Ramsey may have to answer that one. I would like to see it put back in there. Okay. 
I second that. I second that. I really but would. In, in, in what amount? I mean, I'd like to start it. Go ahead. If 50, if, you know, if, uh, unless we want to do more, but. I guess the, the question is, uh, because if if, uh, if the department is doing it, we can we can supplement that by by using a, a contract. And now that's why I was asking the question: What are we averaging? So we could that amount we could say, uh, okay, this would take care of X number of structures in terms of demolition. I was asking Ms. Rand, I don't know if you can hear me. I don't if, know, Mr. Turner. If if yeah. we're going to tear down a house and it has got uh, concrete block or brick or something like that. Uh, you're, they're usually running 45 to 5,500 by the time we get them down and make leave the lot in a mobile state. So, and that's, we have to contract it out. Okay. So if you're saying about um, high end, 6,000. 6, yeah, high end would be 6,000. And see what we try to do, if it's brick or concrete block, we can use that in ravines and things. We don't have to take it to the landfill. If it's roofing and wood and things, we do have to take that up to class four. And then we still have to grade and sometimes bring in dirt to make the lot level so we can get back in there to it and mow. So, Ms. Davis and Ms. Ford, in light of that, about 6,000 per structure, what do you think the, uh, a good number would be? So, could we increase it a little bit before, I mean, past 50, maybe 75? Because 75. I, I, I would like, I would, I would hope that we could do uh, a little bit more in, in this year and, and hopefully that we can help our street and sanitation department out by contracting some of it out. Right, right. Outsource as much as we could. Especially who has a, else. I'm sorry, go ahead. Especially, you know, when they're doing something else or, you know, it could be somebody that, that's just assigned to, to certain areas to do. I mean, I don't know. I know they had some issues last year. Um, something about the back hole was broken or something. I don't know. Track hole, maybe. So... It's been a process for the city to do it. I know it's been a slow process. And another thing that I see is uh, some of the structures that they're taking down or they're burning is just left there. So is that how it's supposed to be? I guess I, I should be talking to code about it. But anyway, that's just something that I see. But I would, I, I agree with Ms. Ford. I would really like for us to do much more than we've done this past year. So we did, you know, we did quite a few, but I would like to see us do more. Because our city is in disarray with the uh, okay. old um, structures and uh, so seventy five, and I'm sorry, I'm, I just pulled out my calculator. Um, seventy five would be. About twelve and a half structures. I think that's I think that's good because that means if we, if we could do one contract structure per month, um, that would make a huge difference. So, and it could be less than that. So, maybe in the end we have a little. So, anybody else have any additional thoughts, Ms. Ms. Crockett? You want to? You have anything to add to it? I think. Well, okay, my name is Ms. Crockett. Well, go ahead, go ahead, Ms. Davis. Is it possible to start with 75 and if we need it, maybe we can get, you know, we can add to this. Absolutely. So, I mean, one is, to me, is not enough. Well, I said one per, one, yeah, one per month. Well, yes. now, I guess in, in theory, the, the city's uh, street department would be also tearing down houses. What we're doing is providing additional funds for a contractor who would be tearing down structures in tandem with the city itself. I understand. Probably one. 
I understand. Right. I, did. But I, mean, I have a question. I do. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Davis. I was done. Uh, in, the, in, in code, they're showing uh, salaries at $87,000. Whose salaries are those? I did see that. And, and I want to ask a question after that. Uh, does that mean we're adding another person? Or is that the person that left and the salary is there? Yeah, that's just the person that that's just the person that left. Okay, yes. so why are we leaving it in there? The mayor and his supposed brother, he wants to have two code enforcement people. Three. You only want one you just leave one. No, we 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 gonna stay with the two, but I, not, and it, well, I suggest we stay with the two, but just put both salaries in at 30000 and take that other 27000 out of there. I suggest that we add a person. It's there. Okay, so if we add a person right now, I don't know. Tell me adding a person to code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What were you gonna say, Miss Clark? I, I I I just right now, if we can get the people who are working in code to work, because we only really have one person in code that's actually can show work. So if we, well, you know, that's just like paying somebody to just be there. Mm. Yes. Well, if we could get a, a working department, I guess uh, I, I'd like to see uh, uh, three uh, people there because I, I guess in the uh, salary sheet it shows twenty-eight uh, times two, and then one at thirty. But if we could, if we could, because that department really needs to function, yeah, and I I think we need to do whatever we can to help uh, 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 strengthen them and, and get them, get them, getting them. Uh, Functional and and whatever because the, there are, there are so many houses and things that and and, and lots and stuff that need uh, 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 taken care of here in the city. Sure. Well, um, my thing is, I see that they just got two and their times twenty eight. <clears throat> we need to have it like broke down in like one or uh, two at 30 and one at 27 or what something to show discretion of how who they're paid. They just got eight or seven thousand. You don't have no clue who make what. And and I guess since they've been uh getting overtime. What is what are we putting in there for their overtime? Because, I, like I said, I, th I mean, like we said before, I think one one of them being paid out of street, and I think that's illegal. Wonder where that? Yeah, overtime for one of the people was being paid out of street, but overtime for the other person, they would have to come back to the council to uh, approve ten and fifteen hours. We would have to give put money in there to pay the overtime. Is that overtime not right, Mr. Not. Turner? Yeah, one person was paid overtime for dog catching uh, services for that he was working for a different yeah. job. Yeah, that's not his job description. We had that, so I don't understand. That's why I, my understanding was that's why he was getting paid thirty thousand. Uh, I mean, it's just like we had one employee that was working at the swimming pool. His his overtime came from the Parks and Recreation Department. He did his regular job, was paid out of the street. But when he worked at the swimming pool, his anything he worked over overtime came out of uh, Parks and Recreation. So is that, is that uh, uh, why is not just yeah. all paid out of the same thing? Because we don't even have Parks and Recreation anymore, do we? I mean, that's a function. So that park and recreation function, we don't have a department per se, but that's the service that he was providing. 
I understand sure. this, sir. So how was he getting paid out of parks and recreation if there's no money in parks and recreation? So well, in, the, in the books, that's where we, in the accounting books, that's not what it was accounted for. Uh, uh, um, tourism reimbursed us for the for those services. So we were accounting for it initially in the Parks and Recreation Department, but tourism was paying for it. So they reimbursed us for those uh, services. So it had a zero effect in, in the general fund. So but that's could, not the situation with code, is it? No. And, what, and that's my question. So how how is somebody in code supposed to be doing code? I thought we had a dog kitchen in in in, in street sanitation. Well, as I know, the code person was doing the dog was performing those services. I ain't seen nobody pick up now, dog. I think it could be a bit confusing like that. Probably we need a, uh, somebody just dedicated to dogs or whatever, part-time or whatever. Because we, we have a lot of uh, dogs running loose. Somebody told me in the neighborhood, we don't have any cats because all these stray dogs running loose. So I didn't know, you know, I didn't know anybody was really doing anything um, to uh, catch stray dogs. That's something that the mayor would have to answer and that, that person in code. But as far as the accounting is concerned, accounting is, is proper. Uh, Mr. Turner, I got one more question. So uh, if, yes, this, if, if the person is working in code and he gets a call about a stray dog, he stops his time in code and runs to uh, dog catching and bill, bills those hours to dog catching, right? You would have to ask the person in code how they break that time out. All I know is when they report the time on the time sheet, that's how it's before. He, he, he reports his time when he does that on the street. He records his street time and he records his uh, code enforcement. Time. But I haven't, oh, actually, I haven't gone through his time. Question. Yes, um, in 2020, we had a itemized list in the projected salaries. And we were given a list of those 2020 projected salaries, wages, and fringe benefits for the year. We don't have one, as I see, for 2021. I gave you a salaries and wages worksheet. Do you want to see? I sent one when I sent the budget. 2021? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. one. Now I might be missing it because when I have the 20. But I'll, I'll check. I can, I can, I can, if you email it to me, I can print it from my email. Okay. I'm just, I may have overlooked it. The one that you sent me, Mr. Turner, was it said 20, I already had 2020, but I asked for 2021, but you sent me 2020. Yeah, I just have 2020 also. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I have 2020. Unless it's labeled this, let me see. Okay, it may be the 2021 that I just didn't change. The um, title, hold on, let me open it real quick. Well, I may have sent you, yeah, that's, that's 2021. I just, I didn't change the, the title on it. I forgot to change the title. So the one that says, the one that I sent you, it says 2020 projected salaries, wages, and benefits. That's actually for 2021. Okay. Okay, Mr. Turn. Yes, ma'am. On those ones for um, code, can okay. we get those like line items like code enforcer one at 30,000, code enforcer two at 30,000, code enforcer three at 27,000? So you'll know that it's actually three positions. Because the way that it's in there now, it's saying eight or 7,000. We could wake up in the morning. And we approve something saying eight or seven thousand, but it don't have a number of positions. 
and we could be paying somebody a, a, a raise that's out of this world. Yeah, but you, you would have to approve the raise. We can't pay anybody more than what you what you authorize. Okay, but yeah. if we authorize eight to seven thousand dollars in the budget, we saying that we paying somebody eight in code eight to seven thousand dollars. No, you're saying that we're paying everybody in code everybody in code enforcement's total salary will equal eight to seven thousand dollars. Okay, that's what I'm saying. We only have two people now, so if we approve it, that means that you can get one of them fifty to seven thousand dollars. No, because and you have to approve someone's salary to to get to fifty seven thousand. The city council will have to approve it. Well, why just had it broke out? But I think for clarity, uh, formula all of our budgets had when you had the the itemization for the department. Right now, you just have the salaries in each of the department on each page as what you are without a breakout to show what each department is receiving and and the salaries are what the salaries are. And previous mayors have used that to their to their discretion and said, "Well, you all approved it right here because you approved this much in salary." I think that's the point uh, Ms. Crockett is trying to go towards is a breakout is to show what each department is getting uh, and what's appropriated in, in accordance because the two work together, the budget and the base pay. And an argument could be made that, that something was passed in the budget when you said, well, only without knowing how many positions there are, you could be saying, for instance, in code enforcement, Ms. Crockett used this up with 57,000 and whatever base pay is, uh, uh, that the raise was was approved by you passing. You gave the money, and you knew it was eighty seven thousand. You know you only have two encoded for an officers. If you're not clear, uh, there's a there's an uh, the argument that can be made that uh, you knew you had two, and and uh, you were appropriate in that. And so I think the thing about it is so a clarity for the council and for the public as well. There should be some type of breakdown in the budget, and not a separate sheet. That, that shows it because the separate sheet would, doesn't get voted on in the council meetings. Only the budget gets voted on. And so a line yeah. item that, that reflect that. I know it's easier and you know all the numbers top of your head, Mr. Turner, but I think part of the issue would be when people look at the numbers, they don't have the numbers on top of their head and they say, well, 87,000 appropriate, but well, what did they go to? And and historically, when we had that in the city of West Homer, it led to all these type of discussions, all these type of arguments between the mayor and the council. Well, you approved it? No, I didn't approve it. And et cetera. And for clarity, the public needs to have the breakout as to here are the current salaries, and that's what we're budgeting so that people can look at it and have a clear understanding without looking at a separate document for a worksheet or anything like that. And so each department you had, there's been a lot of discussion about code enforcement and showing 87,000 with our two code enforcement officers, but it'd be easier. And Ms. Davis would know whether you're talking two or three people. Ms. Crockett would know whether you're talking two or three people. And the rest of the council could have been back and forth as to whether you need two or three people. You would know whether you're funding two or you're funding three and what is the exact amount you're funding. So I think that those positions should be put in there to, to address all, all of that. So we won't spend a lot of time going back and forth and there'll be clarity as to what they're voting on. My suggestion is uh, and like I've been doing it before, you have so many positions. You guys, the city council passes a base pay ordinance. The base pay ordinance authorizes the number of employees in each department. If you authorize three people in a department, you should budget for those three people in the department. If you don't want but two people in the department, take two, put two people in the base pay ordinance. Uh, and so that, that would solve that. You can't hire more people than you authorize. So but it's not just well, people must turn out. I think the part of the issue is knowing how many people actually have budgets because the two experts work together. And so if I were to go to court, if I was sued about it, about the salaries and the city is sued about it, and someone looks at the number, all types of arguments be made. Well, here's your base pay. Well, how many positions do you have? That budget wouldn't tell me how many positions actually were funded. It would just say it's $87,000 there. But your budget should... It said overall... That, but your financial statement shows eighty-seven. Your financial statement should reflect your budget, and so you would have. It's not feasible to have a line item in your financial statements for each individual that's in the that, that's that's working for the city. That'd be a hundred. That'd be 30, 40, 50 people in the police department. You have a line item for each person. If I have a line well, item in the budget, I need to have a line item in the budget. Uh, Mr. Tyler, we've always had 
for years we we've had in the budget to show specifically what when you had the salaries you had four or five lines as to here are all the positions in in, in here that we're funding in this department yeah, that was a, the, the budgets always had that that was not in the budget that was a worksheet that was used to no, calculate in the budget no sir that was in the budget that was in the budget it was said captains four at two twenty two thousand i'm just using an example okay. uh, well, i mean if, if you guys want to do it like that that's fine with me yes okay. please but well, isn't the it the same work? thing as the projected salaries wages and fringe benefits isn't that the same thing it's just not attached to the budget yeah because it has on here one code and code enforcement officer and then it has two Yes, ma'am. That's what I was. That's what I've been using. And every position that's authorized in the base pay ordinance is in that salary, wages, and benefits uh, worksheet. I understand exactly what you're saying, uh, Mr. Turner. But I'm, and this is just my mind wandering. If the base pay, I mean that that uh, worksheet says three positions, but the budget only says that the salaries are at eighty-seven thousand dollars. We all know at this present time, we don't have but two people in code. So yes. my thinking is that if we approve a budget that says $87,000 in code, we can go in and like Mr. Ballard was saying, go in and say, he can go, go in and say, well, I'm gonna pay him $57,000 since it's, it's here. And they approve this amount of salaries and never open up the other positions. We've had positions forever. That's just like in the police department, they have, 30 some positions that they want in the budget, but they never fill those positions. But some kind of way, the money that was budgeted for those positions come up spent. So it, I, I just would rather have more detail. And I'm not saying that you have to list each employee. If you got four employees that work in the same position at the same pay, you just put the four in there under fire department, four captains at such and such a thing. I'm not saying to itemize each person's name, but I, it needs to be more, to me, it just needs to be more clear about just more than just salaries. You can well, add, I, I have to suggest that if, if you're all gonna work off the worksheet, we can just add a paragraph that we attach to the worksheet as exhibit and incorporate the worksheet into the into the budget documents so everybody know. Because it's not just, it's not just uh, what the council wants to know is, is anybody should be able to know exactly what the salaries are, what the positions are. I mean, we're, we're, pub we're public entity, so that's uh, fine. We can attach this as an exhibit so everybody knows the breakout and know that this is what it is, so everybody would, would have a clear understanding of what it is. If, if that's a way of making it easier instead of going re reconstructing the, the entire budget, if we attach a paragraph to say, uh, the, the the salaries are located here in Exhibit A. I mean, you can just make it an addendum. You can just add it to the budget, okay. but like, it's going to be the exact no budget, no position that's in the base pay ordinance that's it's not in the budget. So, like I said, if you want to eliminate some positions, you just have to do it. I, I suggest doing it in the base pay ordinance. And that gets back to, uh, well, we can discuss the police thing a little bit later, but that's those are just my suggestions. But you can. Uh, you can add the you can add that worksheet to as an addendum to the budget, but that's where those numbers come from. And so those numbers are exactly like Ms. Crocker suggested in that um, salary and benefits the way this worksheet. Okay, so I think I think at the last minute I suggested that we end up on the addendum that we have two codes at 30 and one at the uh, 27. Two and you said that you, say that again. Excuse me, I, I, was, I was repeating what you said, I'm sorry. Yeah, and you said that you was gonna have a change to the... No, no, you didn't mention the code, you mentioned, what you mentioned yes. to me the last time was the form and, and the screen sanitation. You yeah, that me. was in the time before that, we talked about the code at two at 30. I don't know if okay. anybody else remembered, but I, I remember. Okay, well, I can do that. I, I, I didn't, uh, I don't recall hearing that. You want two people at 30 and one at 27, right? Yes, that's just my suggestion. Okay. 
Second. Is, is there anything else that needs to be addressed as it relates to that issue? If not, uh, page eight is the fire department and my battery is running low. I'm about to mute and get my AC power. So uh, y'all can dive in on the uh, fire department if you have any issues, I'll be right back. Mr. Turner. Uh, yes, ma'am. What was the overtime for the fire department last year? I mean. Last year? Well, yes, at the beginning. You mean 20, 2019 or 2020? 2020. You want to know that total amount? Yes. Uh, Are you asking how much was budgeted or how much they spent? He can give me both. I just see that it's 100,000 on here. Yeah. Um, and, well, last year I know it was, hold uh, on. Did we uh, budget 100,000 last year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how much did they spend this year? I mean, last year. I haven't finished the actual, I had a, I haven't finished the year end statement yet. Mm -hmm. I can, um, hold on, let, let me pull up a report right quick. Let me, let me, let me pull up the report. Right I back. thought we budgeted $30,000 and they would have to come back. You did, but I don't know what that total is right now. I don't have that sheet. No, I'm saying that. her question was, did we budget 100,000? We didn't budget yeah, 100,000. Yes, you did. Oh, I think you budgeted a hundred. I thought it was like thirty thousand, and then we would have to add, but they went over so fast. No, I think I'm, that was a year I'm before that. I'm not looking at my budget. Say that again. I think that was a year before that. I think last year we but we started out the budget at a hundred thousand. I thought I we changed it last year. I kind of agree with Miss Crockett. I thought we changed it last year. I know year before last it was a hundred thousand. But I, thought yes, I just don't see budgeting. And I think the discussion was, why would you budget $100,000? It's just saying it's there, so y'all use it. OK, let me let, let me look at um, let me look at the last year's budget first before I find out what it was, uh, what it actually was this year. So I thought it that, was 50. It may have been. Uh, no, it's, it was 100. I think that was a year before that. I think the year before that we started at 50 in 2019. In 2020, we started at 100,000. Let me see. Yeah, uh, we had, it was 100,000 100, for the police, 100,000 for the fire. Mm. So let me, let me find out what the actual, amount was for the fire department. And this is the fire department we're talking about, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. right. So if, if you're saying we budgeted 
And I know that's a whole nother problem. We must have bought the budget about three thousand, three hundred thousand dollars for the uh, police then. Uh-uh, we started out each one hundred thousand dollars. They probably uh, spent three. The fire overtime for last year was 183, 252, 19. 183,252 dollars in 19. That's for 2019. 2020. 2019, 20, I think that's like 200, 200 and something thousand dollars. So you're saying we had $182,000 overtime? In the yeah. fire department. The yeah. 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. But but you know about uh, how much is that is, is the mandatory uh overtime and I, I I might be using the wrong word by saying mandatory, but the where they have to get they they get those extra hours every month. That that that's in the neighborhood of like thirty thousand dollars from my calculation. Like they get four, each family would get about four four hours every 20 day cycle. And so that comes out to be about 30 some odd thousand dollars a year. Depends on, you know, what their salaries are, how many they have. But I think I had it, uh, let me see. I got a worksheet here that uh, the last time that we were looking at adjusting their um, salaries, and I think I came up with let me see, 30, about $35,000, well, somewhere around $35,000. And, and That's annually? Yeah, and scheduled overtime, it's just that, you know, the way they schedule it. So that's why I what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Your thirty thousand dollar figure—that's uh, with the uh, twenty-eight day cycle. That's annually for the entire department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we hit one hundred and eighty, the other one hundred and fifty is going to be outside of the um, the regular schedule. Yeah. Okay. And so you notice that lately, that's that's why I'm suggesting one hundred thousand again this year because lately that seems like where it would end up. Cause they gotten the over down overtime down as much overtime is much lower now than it used to be, you know. For a period, it was all, it was like almost thirty thousand dollars a month, and so the last few months has been in the neighborhood six seven thousand seven six seven eight thousand dollars a month. So that's what I'm thinking. It's probably they, they should be able to uh, get overtime down to around a hundred thousand dollars. If, if they go at the same pace that they're going now, shouldn't have a problem doing it. Okay. Yeah, as for the fire department, I mean, the police department, I, that's, you know. Shouldn't the right. fire department fully staffed now? Is it still fully staffed or close to being fully staffed? It's close to it. They just hired a couple more people. I think one person went to EMT class, uh, went to, left to go to EMT training or something like that, but they, they've hired a couple more people. But I don't know if they have 30, I don't know if they have 28 or 30, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood. And we still talking about the fire department, right? Uh, yes. I think, like I said, the, the way they're managing the overtime now, the way they're managing now, I, I feel good about the overtime. Maybe less, but I just I was just being a little bit more conservative, but I, I feel good about it. If they can keep it at the same levels that they're doing now. And let me let, let me see what it was for uh, 2019. Okay.
So in 2019, it was Any thoughts? Well, I'll make a suggestion. And you know, I guess everybody just chime in and tell me whether or not you, you agree or not. If the actual overtime, the scheduled overtime expense is going to be in a neighborhood of 30 to 35, we should include that amount. Um, Hold on a minute. I, I got a worksheet. You fell finish speaking dumb. I forgot. I had a worksheet where I did calculate that. I just forgot where it was. You, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's fine. Um, Perhaps we can double up on that for any for scheduled overtime and unanticipated overtime, and then that would be around the neighborhood of sixty. Yeah, I, uh, and, actually, I think the overtime that I the schedule the regularly scheduled overtime right uh, would be right. let's wait is twenty twenty four uh, twenty three thousand. Okay. It's around, it's a little less than a thousand dollars for each person. And everybody doesn't get overtime. So, so 50 or 60 allows a cushion. And then um, anything beyond that would have to be approved in the manner that we did it uh, this year. I mean, it presented properly in the way we did it this year. But you know, I'm they, soliciting they thoughts. But you know they've been going at a clip around seven eight thousand dollars a month right now. All right. So that that would put it. I don't know if they can get it lower than that, but you know that's for all when they call out the people that off duty runs. Uh, so that'd be right. eight thousand times twelve. That'd be about ninety ninety six thousand. But that gets us through half a year. Yeah, okay. How much did you I, want? For, how much did just, you want? Well, look, j just my perspective, it gets us through half a year so we can reassess. We can always reassess and, and, and approve. But, you know, right. like I said, I'm soliciting thoughts from everybody else at the table. That's just my thought. Okay. Thank you. I think that's good. Okay, so, Ms. Davis, Ms. Ford, um, what number did you say? Uh, I said 60. Okay. I'm fine with that. 60, 75, that'll be good. That'll, that'll work. Okay. Mr. Turner, could you make that uh, line item 60 instead of 100? All right. Anybody else have any other issues that they would like to discuss in the fire department? We're on page eight. And we can move on to page nine, which would start the legal department. That's going to be Mr. Valor. Well, that's actually more district court 
Oh, that's district court. I'm sorry, district court. Yeah, he would be under administration. My 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 mistake. Um, so that's going to be district court. Yeah. Anybody have any issues to discuss with the legal department, AKA district court? If none, Ms. Davis, I saw you unmuted. I don't know if you were about to ask a question, I'm sorry. No. Okay. At the bottom of the page, going over to page 10 is Parks and Recreation. What's contract labor in Parks and Recreation? That that contract labor is the uh, I wasn't sure we we're gonna you know they're gonna open a pool up but that that would be the summer workers that they have at the swimming pool and they've been averaging around when they've been working it's been about fifteen thousand a little over fifteen thousand. Mr. Etherly. Yes. That contract labor for the lifeguards and Mr. Womack is what tourism reimburses from that grant they get from the Helena Health Foundation, plus okay. all the pool supplies and pool upkeep. Okay, so that's the reimbursement amount. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I pretty much offset that. Uh, you may not, and I think I offset that in uh, reimbursement revenues. Yeah, so I, I have that offset, that $16,000 offset of reimbursement. Yeah. Mr. Etherly? Yes. Also, we did not get a grant from the Helena Health Foundation this year because we did not open the pool. But Mr. Womack will be applying for one in uh, 2021 if we can get rid of the COVID. So there will be no grant money this year. <laughs> okay. Um, and next department, next department is police department. And this is the one that I would need, I need to take a look at the breakout on this one. I don't mind telling you, I said this, this before, uh, back last year. Um, we're not filling 30 positions and I don't know. I'm, we got 19, but we funded 32. We can take, from my perspective, we can take some of these out, but that's just my thought on it. Well, I said that the other day, I think I did anyway. Since Mr. Turner said he don't know nothing I said. But uh, if we only have 19 and we funded 32 positions, right. I know we could take at least seven out, out of there and just do the 25 because we've been funding these positions for the last, I don't know how many years and we've never got up to 32. Right. But I guess we need to break down to know which positions to take out, right? Yes, ma'am. I think that would be appropriate at this point. How many? Uh, how many do we have in these? Uh, well, these these different positions: assistant chief, captain, lieutenant, sergeants, corporals, and then patrol officer entry, first class. We need to know exactly what we have to address what we're going to uh, reduce them to. And it looks like we got two part-time officers listed in the in the report. Can we get that uh, for our next meeting? Can we find out how many officers we have? I don't know who to send on that mission, but can somebody get that information? How many we have in each position? I know. I mean, I can. I. You can tell us. Yeah, I got it. Oh. Now. Okay. Do do share. Well, most of it is uh, okay. You know, you got the chief and assistant chief. Right. You got one corporal. And you have uh, 11 patrol officers, first class. And 
and you have three entry level patrol, three entry level patrol officers. Now this is a, this was back in November, so you may have to give or take a person here or there. I don't, you know, you may have had a person leave or I don't think we've hired anybody yet. I think we had, but you know, uh, we had one officer, what happened to one officer? So, uh, so I would give or take a two, a couple on the patrol officer. I would say nine of nine and at least three uh, patrol officer entry level. I'm not sure if they hired anyone recently or not. Okay, so you're saying a total of 12 on the entry slash first class? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't trying to make them separate, but you, so what you're saying is one, one corporal and approximately 12 uh, yeah. entry first class. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I want to make sure I write that down, right? Yeah. And so you, there would be three sergeants, three lieutenants, and three captains. Those are field. The only positions you have now are court. Because, uh, you know, they, the, uh, you probably have to talk to the chief why, what happened to the promotion. But uh, we only have one corporal. The one chief, one assistant chief, and one corporal. Everybody else is an uh, officer first class or entry level patrol officer. Then you have a two part time officer. Okay, so wait a minute. You're saying we don't have any captains, lieutenants, or sergeants? No. Okay. Like, and that's a soft note. <laughs> like I said, unless someone just was uh, promoted and I didn't know about it. But as far as I know, the highest rank that they have is a corporal other than a chief and assistant chief. In, any questions from the, the group? Tell me so why, I mean, um, how many do we have budgeted for each position? I think I budgeted Whatever, I have to look at the, um, let me look at my budget. I budgeted what was in the base pay, I believe. Uh, let me see. Hey, Ms. Clark, that should be in that uh, salaries and wages worksheet. I'm trying to see if I can pull it. I'm trying to find, I got some of the stuff open right now. Ms. Crockett, it looks like you have three captains budgeted, three lieutenants, three sergeants, four corporals, and 17 patrol officer entry slash patrol officer first class. Yes. Oh, didn't they say we didn't have any sergeants, captains, or lieutenants? Yes, ma'am. That's what right. he said. So that, that's, that's nine positions right there, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, if you just, that's, that means seven to total, of, if, if his numbers are, are correct, and I know he's saying they're rough, so he's saying don't, don't, don't hold him to it. If his numbers are correct, there are 17 open positions, if his numbers are correct. And we budgeted 32. That means only 15 of those 32, less than half would be filled. Yeah. You know, and part of my rationale, part of the rationale that we used was that, you know, they were attempting to uh, promote officers. And so that was the rationale to leaving those positions open. But, you know, I know it's been hard for them to fill them. So. Any questions? Any issues? Uh, Ms. I think Ms. Crockett has suggested uh, going down to 25 
which would be a reduction of seven. Uh, Ms. Crockett, where would you suggest, or do you have a, um, mm, well, uh, do you have a suggested uh, position or rank that you would like to uh, make those with um, reductions from? Well, we don't have sergeants, captains, or lieutenants. We can take two off of each one of those, and then one from uh, patrol. Then that's just my thinking. So that we will have, if somebody is entitled to be promoted, we still will have like the opening for a sergeant, a captain, or a lieutenant. Okay. What position did she? Uh, two from the captains, two from the lieutenants, two from the sergeants, and one from patrol officer entry slash first class. Two from the captain, two from lieutenants, and two from sergeants, and one from the office first class slash entry level. Okay. Right. All right. Has the chief said anything else about promotions, uh, Mr. Turner? He said he was going to retest. I don't know if they've started. I know he's given them their uh, material to study. Uh, but I don't know when he, I don't know if he scheduled them yet. But I know they, they began to uh, study the exam and they, they began preparation for the exam again. So you saying that they're, they're possibly getting ready to test for sergeant, lieutenants, and what's the other one, sergeant? Sergeants, lieutenants, and captains. Yes, yeah, so they're getting ready to test with all. Yes, ma'am. So that means that if it's the people who are already employed that are doing these testing, right? Yes. So maybe we should just take the seven from uh, the 17. From the patrol officer entry level. A five. You already got you got twelve of them that he's saying are already filled. So there's only five that are not filled. Um, but Miss Miss Crockett, I, I I think you're probably right. Um, the first time, because if you have only one corporal, um, I guess realistically, what are the chances that we're going to end up with multiple? captains, lieutenants, and sergeants, when everybody else is entry or first class. Okay. okay. And there's three, there's three spots open at the corporal level. So I like your first idea. Uh, Ms. Ford, uh, Ms. Ford, Ms. Davis, Mr. Franklin, Ms. St. Columbia. Y'all got any thoughts on that? It's just, just me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, Ms. Davis. We see you unmuted. Hey, let me ask you guys also consider, uh, are y'all going to consider changing this in the base pay as well or just for budgetary purposes? Just for budgetary purposes, I guess. Okay. That I way think we could we, always come. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Ford. I think the, if the chief needs additional officers, uh, you know, we talked about last week <clears throat> the difficulty in getting people uh, and talked about incentive bonuses and stuff like that. But I think if he uh, has a need of whatever that he can come back and ask, you know, like they did before for additional uh people. I just don't think we should leave the positions open all year or anything like that. I mean, if you can't hire anybody in six months, <clears throat> you know, I don't, I don't think we just should leave that, that funding there. 
Right. I agree. Ms. Davis, did we cut y'all? No, 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 no. I agree. Okay. And I mean, realistically, if 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 pay is an issue, and I guess we'll have to dig deeper, it's, it's, rather than just scratch the surface, if pay is an issue, you can take we can take some of these slots that have been uh, eliminated, and some of that can be rolled back into um, to base pay. But if we don't, if we don't have to change base pay. We can just eliminate the positions, and then that way we wouldn't have to amend base pay again in order to add people, if if so desired. Okay. Can you say that again? Mr. Mr. Turner asked a question, do we want to change base pay? And I'm saying, no, just eliminate the positions because if we change base pay and then they come back and say, well, we got some people we can hire, we would have to amend base pay again in order to do it. But if we just eliminate the positions from the budget, we can just add them back in. By, we could just vote to add them back in without having to amend base pay again. You, you understand what I'm saying? Instead of us um, adopting, changing yeah, the base I'm pay. Yeah, I just need to hear it again. Okay, yeah. And, and yeah so basically, you just can define the position. Right, right. And basically, without the 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 without speaking for the chief, he he's intimated to me that he's sat he's satisfied with the pay structure that we have right now. He feels it's competitive enough right now. Okay. Are you talking about the pay that they have now or the one that's in the uh, proposed budget? Uh, the one they have now is in the proposed budget. You guys, you, you just, you know, you changed that rate structure a few months ago. So that's the, that's the structure that's in the proposed budget. And Mr. Turner is saying that he, he he believes that it, at its current rate is competitive. Yeah. Do we have all of the non-uniform positions? Like uh, the, uh, do we have a CID case manager still? Yeah. Is that position filled? Yes. Okay, and a question, I guess. So the CID people uh, are actually uh, in included in the patrol first class? Yes. And how many, how many people, how many? Five? Hey, CID? Yes. Oh, I'm not sure. But I, I do I know, I know I know we do still have a case manager. Because that's going to be five out of the 12? Yeah. I think it's going to be about either two or three, Ms. Davis. Yeah, I, don't I don't know, know for sure. But I think it's going to be two or three. I got a question. If uh, the county take well, the county is taking over the uh, uh, nine one one. How would that affect our dispatchers? They would still just remain dispatchers, and we would still assume the salary or what? 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 Do you know anything? Uh, Andre Valid, for the record, we we haven't finished working it out. Part of the practical limit we have when they take over nine one one is who will be the boss of those people because uh, you can't serve two separate bosses. Uh, and the proposal, the, the last communication we had with them, the mayor sent them a letter, wanted us to clarify whether uh, they would be working for the chief of police, whether they'd be working for the sheriff, whether they'd be working for uh, emergency management. And we haven't, we haven't worked that issue out. Um, but the issue is uh, that they are, 
they've been paying for the equipment. This is a grievance, excuse me, that goes way back to the, to the 80s. And really, we've been treated unfairly in it, uh, Miss, Miss Ford, because we've been paying for dispatches, but the county owns the equipment. So we've been spending $300,000 a year paying for dispatches when it's the county's equipment and the county has only been giving us back, I think, $24,000. So uh, the county has gotten favorably, been treated favorably through all this. And they said it's their 911 system, their communication system, uh, they're paying, they're paying uh, $84,000 a year. They told us it was like $7,000 a month that they're paying on it. But we are basically providing all the employees. And I don't know how that agreement ever came to place, but that's what we've been doing. And so the mayor was trying to negotiate a better deal because uh, we're spending the lion's share for dispatchers and the county is not spending nowhere near as much as we're spending on dispatchers. And the 911 uh, responsibility has changed as well. So um, I think the city has more people that, that meet the current requirements than the county does. And Ms. Board and I and the mayor as well as the county judge have not finalized an agreement. Did that answer your question? Thank you. Okay. Okay, and I don't know if anybody in this group can answer this question, but I think you're saying that uh, CID is included in the entry in first class? Well, Darren, I know, I'm not sure who's all a part of it. That's Corporal maybe, but I'm not exactly sure who's who's all a part of CID. Okay, so you, you don't know what the ranks are. I don't know. Okay, so I guess the question is, are they included also, and do they also patrol? Yeah, I'm not sure. And uh, additional question, who's the mechanic in the phone? Uh, I, forget, I think he just, we lost him, didn't we? Can, uh, I don't know. I don't think he doesn't have one, uh, but he asked me to leave it in there. We don't have one, but we're leaving it in there? He, uh, the police chief asked me to leave it in there. I, I did ask him about it. Is, is he trying to hire somebody? Uh, we didn't get into too much detail about it, but you know, when I had my when I you know I spoke with East Department head about what they wanted, and uh, like we talked about pay structure and all this kind of stuff, and so that's one of the issues. One of the things I brought up to him was, did he want to hire the mechanic? And I, I forgot the guy's name, but you know, he left a few years ago, and so uh, he had the position hasn't been filled. But I asked him, did he want me to take it out? Did he want to use something else? But he said he he likes for it to stay in there. So I guess we can have him come in next week or I can ask him more about it if you want me to. I mean, I guess, you know, this is this is just me talking. I don't know everybody else th th throw your thoughts out. I would suggest just zeroing it out at this point if there's nobody in that position. Okay. Take it up if there's a, if there's a request made to, uh, to place somebody in that position. Uh, but uh, uh, do share your thoughts. Who's doing the work now? The street person, mechanic? From my understanding, that's what they're saying, that he's doing work for street and sanitation and the police department. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, please. But I, I agree with you, Mr. Eckler, about removing it if, if they're not utilizing. Especially if you hadn't hired anybody in two, two years. Most of the police cars are, be, are being worked on on the outside by other mechanics or either other dealerships. Oh, the state, of course, are the biggest companies in the world. 
Maybe. And that's exactly my point. We got a lot of positions that are not being filled. And I just, I don't see why we keep funding positions that are not being filled. We need to take them out. We can spend that money somewhere else. Or not spend it at all. Yeah. Any other issues on police department? If not, we can move on to page 11, which is um, sanitation. Starts at the bottom of page 11 and carries over to page 12. Anybody have anything on uh, sanitation? All right, I'm moving on. Page 14 is going to start the uh, street fund. Anybody have any street fund issues? Is anybody tired and wanna throw in the towel for the night? Woo! That'll be me. That'll be me. That'll be Miss Crockett. Before we get off, I, I still would like to. Uh, this is not discussion, but I still just want want you guys to keep. Uh, the back of your mind or whatever, like I've asked for the last couple of years, um, we're talking about the street department and the sanitation department and the actual function of the sanitation department versus the actual function of the street department and um, the amount of turn back that we get for the street department. That money can be used for street personnel. But I, I think some of the things that the street department is doing it's more, uh, will be considered more of a sanitation function, like picking up the paper and stuff like that. I think the state Arkansas statute deems that to be a sanitation function. And so what I kind of want you guys to think about, this it isn't anything immediate, but I just like to, to kind of think about moving some of those people that are in the street department into the sanitation department to kind of reduce their street budget a little bit as far as salaries and wages are concerned. And, and increase it a little bit on the sanitation side. They have, so, you know, we had an increase in uh, sanitation fees, so they can cover an increase in a, a few more employees moving from the street to the sanitation department. And that'll kind of ease some of the uh, stress on the, the street fund, as far as the street budget, because the only thing they have to pay for their expenses is street term. Budget. And so I kind of like to move some of those guys, a few, a handful of those guys over into the sanitation department. But that's just not, that's nothing we need to discuss immediately, but that's just something I kind of like you guys to just keep in the back of your mind. It may help us release the stress on the street fund budget. Okay. So that being said, and, and, and I kind of feel like everybody's running out of gas. Um, the issue I think that we need to take up now is when do we want to reconvene? When do we want to meet again? And we still have what do we have? We had street, landfill, and am I missing anybody? We have water departments, but street, landfill, and water departments to take up. So we're almost finished, uh, but that'll give everybody a chance to go back and kind of uh, gather their thoughts and look at what we've already done, and then perhaps uh, um, come back with any issues that you may have that we hadn't that we may have uh, missed. So when do we want to meet again and take this up? Keep in mind keep in mind we have to pass it by February first. So Mr. Etherly? Yes ma'am. Okay your next 
regularly scheduled meeting is going to be on the 19th for a council meeting. Would you okay. consider changing the 19th to a workshop to finish going through the budget and have your regular scheduled meeting on the 26th and maybe you'll be ready to finalize your changes in order that you can pass the budget on February 1st. I like that idea personally, so we can I do go too. ahead and finish up on the budget. Sounds good to me. Okay, so we'll reserve next Tuesday night to exclusively deal with the uh, the 2021 budget. We'll defer all other issues to the 26th uh, for uh, just, I guess, general city issues. And so um, with that being said, uh, Mr. Mr. Turner, if you would make you don't have to get us a printed copy. I'm keeping mine in the margins right now. Uh, but, you know, maybe if there's something you want to bring to our attention, just the notes that we've already made, we won't change. And I think everybody wants a, um, a breakout, a salary breakout included in the budget itself. And uh, we will meet again on Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Okay. And does anybody, think have, anybody have anything they want to add before we... Sign off for the evening. I, I just want to uh, say that I hope that we have a completed, corrected uh, version of the budget uh, before we pass it. I hope we get a chance to look at all the corrections and everything before we pass. Yeah, and we, and we should because if we get it, if we get all of our uh, changes and corrections in on the 19th, we'll have a week before we meet again on the 26th. So we should have one by then. Okay. I mean, it's not difficult. To, I mean, I, like yeah. changes, I can have you the changes that you made. What you knock down? Oh, it's, not, it's, it's not that I have the worksheets, I have my salary schedules and all that kind of stuff. So it's just a matter of plugging the numbers in. I got the formulas and all that stuff. So uh, it's not that difficult to make the change to. Okay. No problem. Is there a motion to adjourn? Do you want, oh, before we do it, do you want these changes, do you want the, do you want to see these changes, send you something with these changes in it? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you get us a corrected uh, document that has the changes that we made tonight and then we'll go from there. Yeah, okay. Okay. There. I move to adjourn. Just a second. Have a good night. Second, have a good night. Have a good evening. Good night.